Hey guys, so uh, today we're going to be doing the transfer case. This is for all my viewers that are watching my NV4500 swap and they want to swap their input shaft for their transfer case. So this is basically just going to be a reassembly video. Uh, I'm going to put a link to a forum that shows you how to pull it apart because that's what I used. A guy did a really nice write up on it and you can't really get much better than that. So I'm just going to put a link to, uh, to his ad there on Cummins forum, or not his ad, his uh, his thread. So I basically disassembled this thing last night because it was New Year's. We were sitting out here, so I got out the impact, started pulling stuff apart, and never took a video of it. Uh, so when you tear it down, you're gonna have your old input shaft and your new one. So your old one here, see how you can see right through there? Uh, before you couldn't. There's a cap in here and a bearing, and you have to pull that out and uh or punch it out you flip this over i've already done it i was just trying to figure it out myself anyways you got to punch it out from this way and you'll get a bearing i'll show you right here i got it in the new one already the from the old shaft to the new shaft the bearing is the same size as long as you got the correct shaft i'm sure uh anyways you take a look in here that's my new input shaft you can see there's the old one, so this is the new one right here. So you can see that cap right there, and this bearing. You have to drive those into the input gear. Uh, it's not hard to do at all. I just took a 19 millimeter long socket and just tapped gently. It popped out of there, spun it around, drove that cap in until it hit. Then take your bearing with a, I, I use a chisel to do stuff like that. Just very finely go around the edges. I mean, ideally, if you have a bearing driver, that's what you would use. But just tap it in until that bottom's out. And you're in. That uh, bearing surface has to be in there because your main shaft there, that's what rests on it right there, that bearing. So once you have that out, or all that out, you'll see in that form that I'm going to route you to. Uh, you can go for disassembly or uh, reassembly. So everything here is good. You're going to want to make sure your magnet's clean. I have it set to the side because we have to flip this case. Uh, I cleaned it. It's right there. Uh, yeah, so inspect all your bearings and stuff. Mine are all A1 input bearing. Everything is fine. Like this thing's got been well taken care of, I guess. Uh, you can check your your shift forks and everything. I got them down there for now. I'll show you them after, but make sure the plastic's on them and stuff. So uh, yeah, make sure you're clean. I, I break clean this whole thing. Uh, so yeah, now once you're all reassembled here, you put that bearing into the input shaft. You put your input shaft in there. You have a, uh, there's a plastic thrust washer that goes on the back here, right in the, there, when you have this flipped over plastic thrust washer input shaft and then you have uh, another plastic thrust wa thrust washer with tabs on it that go in here a metal one that goes right in here and then you got a big uh, ring around here that you put in there and then that's it for your input shaft we can flip that over and and slide it through and install it all right guys so next here flip your transfer case like this uh, <clears throat> I'm sure everything's clean in here and that uh, planetary gear set that I had you just set it down in there just like that you just tr you just twist and and uh, it'll go down in there I'll just tip it here so you can see you just twist it down and it'll go down in there and fit nice in there so it sits in there nice um, I had some issues with a clunking sound when I would turn that and it just turns out that when you're putting this in uh, this bearing surface here, I'll just your bearing can just slide out a little bit because uh, your front retainer here and uh, gasket actually holds that in. So, uh, anyways, put that in there, and then uh, you have your slot right here. You go ahead and put your uh, snap ring or your retainer ring, put it on there, and then uh, we got to get cleaning up this and we can get that put on. Alright guys, so flip your transfer case back over and then you can take your small shift fork here, I think this is your range selector. Um, you want to get, you have to get this notch right here into the groove right here. So you can uh, 
set that down in there. You gotta make sure it gets in the gear there. And you can kind of jiggle it over into there. And now we're in our range, we're in there. Um, once you put your post through after, it'll go. So anyways, put a bit of oil on all this stuff when you're putting it together. I just put a tiny bit, they say petroleum jelly. I'm just using a tiny, tiny bit of synthetic oil, some gear oil on everything to lubricate it. All right, guys, so uh, bringing this back in now, you gotta put your uh, bigger clutch fork in here now, your slider, and see how the right side of that is bigger, the tapered part. That's the part that goes uh, down in, so you can slide that into there. And then uh, you're gonna have to give it a little bit of a jiggle at the end to get it into the, into the hole, and then there we're in. So uh, yeah, like I said, just make sure that this flat part's here and the taper's down. I uh, w I didn't remember when I pulled it apart, but looking in the manual here that I have on the computer, it shows it uh, right there that that's down. I know it looks like it's up up there, but uh, you can see that the taper's part's right here and the flat part on the edge is there. So the tapered part, and then you got your short shaft here, which is, uh, this part here and in turn it it slides uh, through there to go to the front of your transfer case so that would be at the that would be not this tapered part rides in here on your synchronizer rings all right guys so next you can take your chain I don't think it matters either way what it goes on I can see uh, the outline where my snap ring went was on this side, so that's the way I'm putting it back on. Anyways, uh, you can get your shaft in there. If you, if you took yours apart, I did just to check some stuff. Uh, there we go, we're in there. And uh, you simply slide this on, but see the brass synchro right there, this, this tab right here? Those have to line up with a spline on uh, on your fork right here. They can go between them. They have to line up on the spline. So uh, I'll show you that here in a second. So you just flip it over, and uh, you can start sliding her in there. And then you check to see your splines. I'll show you here. All right, so as you can see, this synchronizer ring right here, the or the button here, whatever you want to call it, is lined up right there with a the spline. So is this one here, and uh, the third one back here is also. So just to give you a better picture of that, uh, I'll just show you in the manual here, just if you're not understanding. So that strut, it should, calls it here. See how right here it could be between two two teeth and up here it's dead on on the spline. That's what you want or else it's not going to synchronize right and you're going to have grinding it says in the manual. So once you have that done just uh, slide that down in and it'll click right in there. Alright so uh, you'll t it'll take quite a bit of wiggling and you might have to press on your struts there on those brass pieces and it'll pop down in give it some wiggle and then you'll feel it go down there in there nicely now uh, you can take your spring here slide it back on before you forget this washer goes on top of the spring here and then uh, grab your magnet too. throw that in because the case will be staying this way now so do that before you forget uh, slide that in there it just sits right in there uh, once you're done that, then you can take your snap ring here, put it on your output front output shaft there, or you can put it on there, clips on there, and uh, that's about it for now. All right, so now with uh, your case down here, make sure you get your magnet in again, snap ring on, uh, your spring and washer here. Uh, you'll notice that when you look at it, the chain's kind of off-center there. That's because when you have that tail housing on over here and stuff, this gets pulled up and held with that snap ring that you took off on the way out when you disassembled it. 
uh so anyways uh that's why stuff if you're trying to shift it and stuff now it won't work or that's what i can figure out at least i double checked all with the manual on the computer over there and uh everything's in order and stuff i just double check just just in case and uh yeah we're gonna put i cleaned up the other side uh your oil pump pickup tube here has screens in it make sure those are clean mine didn't have anything in them but i checked i uh brake cleaned if this hasn't been apart before the factory uh gasket that mopar used it's like almost like a plasticky gasket almost like it's ga it's gasket maker liquid gasket but uh when you spray brake cleaner on it it just makes that stuff just shard just like flakes of plastic and it'll come right off just a hint if you're scraping it and can't do it so we're gonna run a bead of uh, permatex the right stuff around uh, our case and put our half back on all right so once you get your cover on it's quite tricky to get on uh, I put only put like four bolts in right now just to s snug it down on the on the goop in there but uh, once you get that on and your oil pump everything's aligned make sure that your oil pump in here and stuff is good you got to take your sir clip and you you give this a yank pull up there and it'll fit into that groove there and uh, then you can then we'll get on to putting the rear housing on all right so uh, once you have all your bolts on there's a stud that goes right on this end and the other side uh, your torque specs here are 26 to 32 foot pounds and then uh, after that you can put your extension housing on, make sure you have that ring on there. Mine uh, is bent, so I gotta get a new one. Same with for the input, I bent that one, taking it out. So I'm gonna get a snap ring for there and a snap ring for here. And uh, then you can just put your tail housing on here, put some uh, goop around there, put that on. And uh, then on the front, you're gonna have to put your uh, input shaft seal on it's the same thing you just put it on the front there uh, four bolts make sure your seals good and uh, put a bit of goop on here and put that on and all right guys so the case is back together now I got uh, the new snap ring this one's uh, gone or it was pooch so I got a new one there had to go over drive about an hour to get that one it's in uh, the back one. We got the transfer case saver on there. I'm making a separate video on how to install that, but that's instead of your snap ring, you put that on. So it's a common issue for this uh, snap ring to snap. So uh, we got the fix in there. Uh, all we have left to do before we put it in the truck is uh, just put this front cover on. When you put this front cover on, that's your oil hole there. You have four bolt holes, and then that's an oil hole. You line that up with here. That's 12 to 20 foot pounds. And then uh, your back tail stock here, it is, uh, I'll just look at my man manual right here. It is extension housing, 26 to 34 foot pounds. So that's how you uh, reassemble a the 241 uh, transfer case. Thanks for watching.